live from New York. It's your Yu-Gi-Oh! News, news Gio, with your host, Davinator1212. Good evening. This is news Gio, your monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! News. I'm your host, Davinator1212, and these are your tonight's top stories for September 2019. With Worlds over last month, for both the TCG as well as Duel Links, one might think that the whole Yu-Gi-Oh! competitive scene would be rather quiet. However, September has been a month of both several YCS regional events as well as several large Duel Links events, showing that just because Worlds are over doesn't mean Yu-Gi is going to sleep. The TCG saw two major tournaments this month of September. YCS Ghent over in Belgium, as well as YCS Niagara Falls uh, over in uh, Buffalo. Funny enough, I actually did an internship around, uh, over in Buffalo there, so I, I know the area very well. My hometown isn't very far from there, but, but whatever, I, I digress. YCS Ghent over in Belgium saw its final match between a Cyber Dragon deck and a Lunalite deck. While both decks were running Orkes engines in order to support their main engines, they were both decidedly rogue decks nonetheless. Lunalites did manage, however, to get a nice 2-0 sweep, showing some very interesting tactical play. However, the clear winner of this event was Farfa here, T-posing in the background, like the absolute mad lad he is. Over here stateside at YCS Niagara, we also had a very interesting top as well. First place at YCS Niagara was taken by a Danger Manju de Erza OTK strategy. While it might be surprising that such an incredibly rogue tier deck might have topped a YCS, the fact that it can hit like an absolute truck out of nowhere does lend some credence to its viability in the meta. As well as this is further supported by the fact that at the end of last month at YCS Portland, another Grand Maju de Erza deck also managed to get a second place. However, the build was decidedly different. But it don't matter. Big number! And with that, we move on to a small segment back by popular demand, Marty's Tech Choice for the Format. Hey Marty, what card should people be playing this format? Is it is it is it this one? Oh, I, I think it's I think it's this one. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> <laughs> uh, goofy cat. However, September was not just busy for the TCG, it was also busy for its mobile counterpart Duel Links, and to fill you in with all those spicy details is our Duel Links expert Jason. Take it away, Jason! Greetings, Duel fans! It's your boy Ty Wolf, the friendly neighborhood super beast, and I welcome you back to another edition of the Duel Links Corner. When the World Championship ended last month, you would figure that the Duel Links scene will go on a little hiatus, maybe slow down a little bit. But Konami said, uh -uh, that just ain't gonna happen. I tell you, one of the programmers down there must have been eating their Wheaties because they came out the gate like they were Usain Bolt, giving us an extreme amount of content this month. Let's kick things off talking about the KC Qualifier Cup. This PvP style event rewards players with prizes ranging from gems, tickets, and even an invite to World. Don't worry, if you didn't get your shot this time, you're going to see another one between two to four months, I guarantee it. Next, we're going to talk about the introduction of Carly Carmine as well as her signature cards, the Fortune Ladies and her Earthbound Immortal, Acilla Piscu. Yeah. God, I'm pretty sure I butchered that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're gonna talk about the return of the fabulous, fantastic Pegasus, who made his return, bringing in Toon Dark Magician, as well as the previous support he did from his other trips back here. Next, we got GX Duelist Chronicles Ubel. This walkthrough of Duel Academy's third year offered players the opportunity to win Ravier, the Lord of Phantasms, Vision Hero Poisoner, Rainbow Dark Dragon, and the Supreme Sun. In addition, by defeating the King of Game three times, you also have the ability to unlock the exclusive skill, Ultimate Fusion, for the character Jaden U. Bell. This allows the player to draw super polymerization from outside of their decks. Oh, goddamn, this is a lot of content. In order to end this month strong, they decided to give you the Aladdin treatment and bring you to a whole new world in the game, based on the Dark Side of Dimensions movie. In layman's terms, it's spicy DM. 
It's going to feature the characters Seto and Mokuba Kaiba in their older years, along with Sarah, the little sister of the main villain of the movie. Now, obviously, they're going to make sure to include Yugi Mono and Agami, but as of right now, I do not have a time or release date that these characters will be available. And just in case you was filled up at this moment, the gifts are going to keep on coming. They're actually giving away so much prizes this time around, starting with the alternative artwork of the Dark Magician, multiple tickets, including the Ultra Rare Dream Ticket, which gives you access to any Ultra Rare in the game, up to the, I wanna say, the last two sets. A thousand gem, and they're introducing the special skill tokens. Skill tokens can be exchanged for different skills to give into any character of your choosing. And the giving still doesn't stop there. We just received the new Master of Chaos Structure deck, Feature some of the more recent support for the Dark Magician archetype, including the Magician of Chaos Ritual monster, as well as the Dark Calvary Fusion monster himself. We were also blessed to receive a brand new main set, Dark Dimensions, which gives us Chaos Sorcerer, Alistair the Invoker, some of, the, some of its fusion monsters, the Gadget monsters, the Grave Keepers, the Elemisaurus, the Magician Girls, and even everyone's personal favorite, especially Dave's. Pelennium Oracle Mahad. Card blows. <laughs> yeah. This is truly a fanboy set. And with that being said, I ain't gonna take up much more of your time. Back to you, Dave. Say, Jason, uh, with Halloween coming up next month, we all here in the studio have been going over what we want to be for Halloween, and uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but uh, I was wondering what you were going to do. Something like, I don't know, T'Challa? See... I done told you, if you came out of pocket one more time, I was going to snap back on you. Hey, what are you, what are you doing? No, don't. No, I'm going to live up to no, my word. No, 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 hey, no, no, get up, no. Well, as David is uh, a little predisposed at the moment, we're going to head to our next segment, Cooking with Tommy. Take it home. Welcome back to another episode of Yugi Foods. I'm your host, Tommy. So, today what we are doing on the show is something special. Uh, Dave has requested that I go ahead and try to create something based off of a Yu-Gi-Oh card. And Dave has chosen... Scramble Egg and Sonic Chick. So, today, based off of those cards, what we will be doing is creating a French dish called Coca Wan, which literally translates to rooster and wine, and we will be making French scrambled eggs on toast with it. So, to start with the coco wine, what you're going to need is a half pound of bacon, one cup of chicken broth, some salt and pepper, uh, about 10 or so of button mushrooms, two shallots, one yellow onion, seven pieces of quartered chicken legs, cup and a half of red wine, two teaspoons of flour, and a few sprigs of thyme. We also have our French bread over here that we will be uh, toasting. You want to go ahead and set your oven to preheat at 375 degrees, and we'll get started with everything else. How do oven? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Uh, All right, so first what you want to do is you want to get a medium saucepan and take your half pound of bacon here and you're going to set the saucepan on a medium flame and take your bacon and you're going to chop this into about uh, half inch pieces. Then you're going to add it straight into the pan. While your bacon is browning, you want to go ahead and take your onion, chop it in half, because you're only going to use about half this onion, dice it up. At the same time, go ahead and take your shallots. You want to cut the small end off, and then go ahead and cut it at the butt. Hey guys, pro gamer tip. Even though you might be a sweaty Yu-Gi-Oh player, there's no reason for you to be a dirty one. Make sure you wash your hands before you cook. Now you want to go ahead and you want to chop up your uh, mushrooms as well. All right, so as far as the thyme is concerned, you're probably going to want to only use a few sprays. Keep them whole because they're going to get removed from the dish later. Now that your bacon is all nice and brown, what you want to do is you want to drain it, leave the grease in the pan, and make sure you remove it from the heat or else fat will burn. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take your pollo. You're going to drop it into the pan, uh, skin side down. Now, you're going to go ahead and cook these for about four minutes or so. 
on each side so as to brown the skin. Now that you have your chicken cooked, what you're going to do is you're going to add your shallots and onions as well as your mushrooms on a low flame and let them saute and get nice and soft. Hey Dave, come taste this. Taste my saute. Mmm. Oniony. So guys, at this point, your vegetables are nice and wilted, so today you're gonna go ahead and take two tablespoons of butter. Throw that semen demon in there. And you're gonna take your two teaspoons of flour. You're gonna make sure that the butter and the flour get well incorporated. All right, so now that your butter and flour is incorporated, what you're gonna do is go ahead and take your, or so level up again, uh, your glass and half of red wine. And then you're gonna go ahead and make sure you turn your flame up to about a medium low heat. For those of you who are curious, this is a 2017 Pinotage from South Africa. All right, so now your wine sauce has reduced about halfway. Now what you want to do to this is you want to go ahead and add in your one cup of chicken broth and your bacon. You're going to let this continue to simmer on the flame for about another five to ten minutes. Afterwards, you will add in your sprigs of thyme and let that simmer once again for about another five to ten minutes. So now you're going to take your wonderful sauce, you're going to add it into your baking pan over your chicken. Is this full or it's combo? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now you're going to go ahead and take your chicken and sauce mixture and you're going to add it into your oven that has been leveling up to 375. <laughs> uh -oh. Well, it's got to fit though. It's got to fit though. Remember kids, do this shit before you put the, the thing in the oven. That way you don't burn yourself. Like I just did. So how long in total should it be in the oven? In total it is an hour in the oven, a half hour with basting it every five minutes, and another half hour completely leaving it alone. How many white claws has it been? Uh, about 12 back. <laughs> And with that, we are going to turn off our oven and then start on the eggs. I have a baker's dozen of eggs because I have uh, about six adults and one child. So you want to go ahead and crack the eggs, put them into a large bowl that you can mix them in. You're going to use about uh, two tablespoons of cayenne pepper, a triangle of brie, quart of heavy cream, block of cream cheese, butter, and parsley which is going to be to dress everything. You're going to set your heat to about a medium-high flame. You're going to incorporate three tablespoons of butter into said flame. Now that your butter has melted, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and add your eggs into the pan along with some heavy cream. So I'm just getting the heavy cream prepared right here. A quarter carton of heavy cream from the pipe. Add in some pepper, and then you want to add in some salt, and you want to continually stir and mix these eggs. Okay, so now that your eggs are on the side, you're going to go ahead and make the cheese sauce, which is the final step of this process. Make sure you turn your heat to a medium-high medium setting. You're going to go ahead and take three tablespoons of butter, add it to the pan, let that melt. We're going to take about a quarter pound of brie and you're going to slice the rind off. The rind will not melt properly and you're going to go ahead and take your package of cream cheese and you're going to split it in about half. Quarter cup of heavy cream, a few dashes of salt for taste. Make sure it all whisks in together to make your wonderful cheese sauce for your eggs. Now it's time to plate your dish. And there you are. Scrabble egg and Sonic chip. Like I said, time for the taste test. Here you are, Dave. Let me know how everything came out. It's far more appetizing than the hot dog pie did. That is so good. There you have it, guys. A bougie dish for bougie Yu Gi Oh players. Dave's enjoying this dish. See you next time. Um. Uh. Okay, <clears throat> the, uh, the, thank you Tommy for that delicious dish, it was fantastic, and thank you Jason for uh, taking over uh, there for a second.
And with that, your September edition of News Geo comes to a close. However, fear not, we will be back next month with our spooky October edition with all of the fun analysis of the new sets coming out that I think are happening, if I remember correctly, as well as some developing details of the new Dual Links area. Tonight's News Geo was sponsored by TCG Player. If you guys would like to support the channel or support the show, use the link down in the description below. You can get all the cards for all the cheap. It was also brought to you by Meta Mats. If you'd like a custom cloth play mat, uh, use the promo code TROLLTHEMETA and you'll get 10% off your purchase. So you guys can all look like you know what you're doing. Like me. <laughs> That was your September edition of News Geo. Thank you for joining us. I have been Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2, and good night. What's up, douchebags? By the power of this heel of all my calculos, I command you to subscribe to the channel. Grab your deck and be sure to click one of these other videos by Dave and Nader 1, 2, and 2. It's the best damn channel on the internet. Yeah, man. Yeah.